Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. This podcast is a conversation between two business partners, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. Join us for a lively conversation about all things interior design, from current projects, trade show experiences, worldwide travel, what's in, what's out, and all the challenges and wins they've had running their successful design business. Whether you're a seasoned interior designer, new to the industry, or a creative enthusiast, you will walk away with insightful information, newfound inspiration, and a smile on your face after listening to these two. And here they are, Joanne and Kelly. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. This is episode 160. And today our guest is Amy Fleury, author and speaker. We're excited to have Amy as our guest today. She's a nationally recognized speaker on the subject of DIY PR. She's authored two books and developed a must-have media list. The popularity of Recipe for Press has created a platform that gives interior designers all the tools they need to take advantage of press opportunities. She has decades of editorial experience producing stories for top print publications. You can check out her website at amyflurry.com. It's A-M-Y-F-L-U-R-R-Y to see her work and the services she offers. An example, for example, advising, media outreach, PR, brand activation, and partnership. In 2020, she founded Aloka Home, A-L-O-K-A, a company that re-energizes vintage quilts made of layers of saris, which is an outer garment mainly worn by women from India, that were hand-stitched 60 to 80 years ago with new applications for today's living. They're so beautiful. They shampoo, soften, and dye the vintage pieces in India and then cut and stitch families of pillows and custom cushions in their Atlanta studio. Check out the beautiful quilts, coverlets, and pillows to purchase at www.alocahome.com. Or ask us, because we're the owners of many. (laughs) So before we dive in, we want to let you know that this episode is sponsored by our friends at Outrageous Interiors. Outrageous Interiors is a family-owned retail store here in Atlanta that's been in business for 35 years. They have four locations, Alpharetta, Swanee, Marietta, and Kennesaw. They are a go-to source for designers because not only do they offer a great trade discount, but they also sell off their floor. So um, they've got upholstery, rugs, case goods, great items to style with, and uh, they've been a go-to for us for for especially if we need something in a pinch for a long time. So they've got a great selection of ever-changing stuff, lamps and art, mirrors and accessories, and great quality things. So check them out on Outrageous Interiors. It's at Outrageous Interiors in on Instagram and Facebook, which is really, I think, the best way to see them because they have a lot of fun going on and they're very engaging. Yeah, they so. do a lot of behind the scenes of their um, design projects yes. in their clients' homes. So thank you, Outrageous mm-hmm. Interiors. Mm-hmm. All right, welcome, Amy. So great to see you. It's awesome to see you both. It what It's been a month since High Point, since we hung yes. out a little bit. We hung out a little bit high point. That was so fun in the quilt area. So, Amy, let's just start. Go ahead and tell us about yourself, your background. Like, what's your story? The story, wow, it's been, I always identified, and it's been so long since I, uh, you know, was in the editorial world. Um, I spent 20 years in it, and I think I will forever identify myself as a writer and a storyteller. And that's probably why I can get so excited about someone else's story, um, about the story of quilts, of product, and why I, I care so much to communicate that story to, you know, the people who will ultimately buy things and, and want to be a part of that. Um, so in 2010, I transitioned from journalism. Um, I just, it, it was time. And, uh, I, I didn't really have a plan, but the one thing I knew I wanted to do was write recipe for press. Um, it was kind of a response to everybody who had ever asked me to have a coffee and to tell them how to get into the magazines. Um, I think that might be I made it easy. interior designers yeah. number one thing. How yeah. do you get published? Yeah. And we have we have bought yeah. the book. This is what it looks like. And that's the second book. The first book, yes. I don't know. The I think first I have book the first one kind of at a, home, and then and we have the second one as yeah. well. Right. The first one was a generalist. It was for more like um, 
entrepreneurs with product. And it was just the fundamentals, like here's what every editor everywhere wants to tell you, but they're not going to tell you. And those simple mistakes that I would see um, time and again, the same ones that people would make, they would have fantastic product, but kind of make uh, the same mistakes in approach would signal that you're not rest ready for press yet. So if we mm -hmm. could just share those, and that's what I wanted to do is share the things that get in the way of an editor really giving your product a good, fair look. Um, and in doing that, it really demystified uh, how to be your own publicist because not everybody is ready or can afford a publicist mm -hmm. right away, but there's so many things that they can share their product well. Mm -hmm. What a great service. What a great thing you have provided because right, I know. I, and nobody else has ever done that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's always this mystery. So to be able to give people that opportunity is a really big deal, I think, and really great and it, that you. It, it, is, it, it is from one lens. I do want to say that because the, the lens that I was coming from was editorial. And I didn't really feel that I could be an editor and a journalist and share that at the same time. But when mm -hmm. I when I really transitioned out of that, I felt like, okay, fair game. Now I can share on um, from that point of view. And that's one point of view. And and uh, you know, I've learned also um, as I spoke on the subject of DIY, DIY PR that the majority or of the seats that were getting filled were interior designers. And I really paid attention to that over time. And that's how the opportunity to be a part of a project management app for interior designers, to advise interior designers and really get to know the business of interior design. That's, at, I really focused in that lane because I could see that interior designers were above all other groups of um, professionals, had so much opportunity for visibility and for press, yeah, um, they you operate in beautiful images, which is step one photography, um, and it was coming on strong. And you all were paying attention more than any other group, and that's why mm -hmm. I chose that lane. And I'm so glad I did because I love the beauty aspect of interior design. I think the business is incredibly complex and interesting, and um, and now I'm my my understanding of communications led to product yeah amazing so let me just go back to what you said about when you when you first started the first one mm -hmm. well, I'm sure it applies to the interior designers as well but what were some of those those errors that you kept seeing repeated that that really incentivized you to write the book to help people mm hmm and, and mind you, I could also see that people thought they were doing the right thing and putting a lot of, of time, time and effort. Yeah. So, so it, um, I wasn't trying to say like, I wasn't trying to come down hard. I'm just saying, just know this, that when you pick up a phone and call an editor, they will always tell you to email them. Unless mm -hmm. you are returning a call to an editor, you are by calling, taking them off of a very focused place where they might be writing the pages um, you know, there you're really like on a almost like a record scratching. You, and this was before we had <laughs> we knew who was calling and all of that. But yeah, yeah. Um, you really, really they want the pitches arriving by email. Even if you DM an editor, they would say send me an email. And by doing that, they are asking you to focus your idea, because when you're calling or you're quickly dash, dashing off an idea, it hasn't it's not fully baked and you're asking them to come up with it. The closer you can get to it being the right fit and a good idea, they can take it from there and they can see you get it. Um, and that just takes a little more time. Also following yep. up incessantly, like one follow-up, you get one follow-up. <laughs> and most people <laughs> don't even do that. They, they pitch and then they forget to follow up and half of the placements come in the follow-up. But following up every week is then you become that, that person and you don't want to become that person because editorial teams are small and they share a lot and you'll get that <laughs> reputation so you you just want to be professional about it and know that one follow-up um maybe a second if you really felt like you gave a best project and you're gonna now move on you're just giving them a consideration and saying i'm i'm aware you know i haven't heard from you so i'm going to now take this to another publication out of consideration 
those mm -hmm. two things are key. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the list just goes on, ladies. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It's all gonna <laughs> you know a drop come into your head that has hundred a hop a drop yeah. box with hundreds of images, not a focused twelve of your best from um, in low resolution with high resolution available. But I would receive and many editors would receive just all of them thinking like y'all pick but we haven't even said we're going to pick yet. <laughs> and so yeah, and now you've just like worn work. me out and now yeah. I'm not going to pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm worn out already. And now I'm, I'm getting that feeling that like, you don't know, you don't get it. And this is going to be hard. And so I'm going to go to somebody who gets it. <laughs> That's such a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember following up with an editor once and I probably followed up twice and I could tell I, she was a little miffed, but I was, I, I, the reason why I followed up twice was because I was anxious because we only send, we only send our work to one editor at a time. We, you know, we pick the one we think is the best fit first Absolutely. and then we, you know, it's not being shown, it's not being presented to anybody else. And which I know is another key, yeah, key thing mm -hmm. to do. And so I just was, I guess, yeah. you know, a couple, maybe a month or two had gone by and I was kind of like, just do you like it or not? Cause I kind of like to keep pitching it, and I think I made her mad. Yeah, let well, me ask a quick well, question because uh, I mm -hmm. very quickly. Go ahead. So, um, and maybe this has just changed over time. So, in recipe for press, um, are we only talking about press, or you know, blogs and other outlets yeah. are great ways to show your work as well? How do you feel about that? I think it's all press now. I think mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Visibility is a great word. Um, I feel like Rachel Moriarty started using that, and I was like, "That's a good, that's a good word too." Because press is now online. To me, it's newsletters, mm -hmm. it's blogs, it's social collaborations. Because really, anyone who is going to at this point um, take the time to do something well, they are going to share it across multiple platforms, and all of those things are meaningful to you. So I think that kind of visibility is just um, tremendous, but um, uh, and and when when someone goes to a publicist and they say, "I only want print," that's a very limiting lane mm -hmm. because for projects um, there are only so many placements. Editors are booking out their books or publications two, three years in advance. So if you are willing to sit on something in that unknown space for two to sometimes a year, sometimes it could be 18 months, just because you want print, that's fine. But I try to kind of roadmap it, a kind of a good, better, best. Where do you think this is a really good fit? Have you considered this publication online? Because it would happen quicker. It would live there longer. Um, it has more reach. So I, I do think it's opened up in terms of what we consider press, I would I would think. Well, um, I, I think that's great because, right, um, if, you, if that's your only one place, there are so many other opportunities. And I think it's nice that we have other places that we can show our oh, work. Pe well, of all, don't, play, think about mm -hmm. it, of all the magazines, regional and national, that we've been published in, I can name, we got, I think, two jobs off of the Cottage Living feature. Mm -hmm. And I can't pinpoint yeah. another one, but we've gotten, think about the amount of jobs and, and calls we've gotten from yeah. that one AJC article. But you know what, but, all on, those years but on the flip side, when someone is, they may ne never look at shelter magazines, but right. if they go to our website and they go to our press page and they see that That's we've cute. been in Southern Home and some other things. And then all of a sudden you see all the publications we've been in. I think that's a that's a great confirmation yeah. to a person's like wow they've been nationally published. I, so I, I think there's a few different some, some street it's cred out all there. Of yeah. It. Yeah. it 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 all matters. Um, that what you mentioned is another one of those no no nos when it comes to a writer an editor and they write about you and they here you have a, a great feature and you're like oh but you didn't run that picture or oh it really hasn't done much for me never take that back to the editor believe it or not people do it routinely thinking that you've got this kind of relation buddy relationship and that's really hurtful to the people who spend a lot of time on your your work um, editorial is free 
Um, and they also have a point of view. So while you might not like the picture they chose, they chose it because they know their audience and they are trying to, uh, they have a point of view, just like you have a point of view in your design. Um, so that's, that's, that's another one of those point. things I saw people yeah. do and, and they, they thought it was conversational and it's like, oh, that just shut, that just shuts an editor or a writer down so fast. And then they just call their other writer, to fr writer friend and they're like, oh, you won't believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's yeah. true. <laughs> that's yeah. true. So, and I, you know, I, we that's just good to remember. Because yeah. I don't oh, think people are doing great. it in bad, in poor faith. I just think they get, they spend time and they feel like, okay, we're leveling, we're on the same page. But it's really, really important to remember that any publication has, they have a look, a feel. They are going for something that they have identified is their look, their voice. And you'll have Frederick uh, coming in, Freder Frederick Schumacher's magazine, they have their voice and everybody has is go trying for that. That is their point of view. And so mm -hmm. they will make it their own. You know, speaking of Frederick, <laughs> speaking of Frederick, we just got that a few days mm -hmm. ago. That magazine is unbelievable. Yeah. Is, oh, it's so is good. That, it's, is that out on newsstands? Like, can, or is it just a trade thing? It is. It started as a trade thing and as a print junkie, it was, you know, just all of the all of the writers <laughs> are like, this is the best thing ever um, yes. because of how they tell the story right. and how they share it. And they did, if you'll remember, they their editor is a former editor of Veranda. Um, and then they started kind of wooing and picking off all the best editors. So you've got tremendous editorial team, which should shed light on the direction of Schumacher um, and what they think is important. All of those stories also end up on their really good, uh, and I don't work for them, but I'm, I'm just really impressed. They're really good um, yep. yeah. online site and publication. Mm -hmm. And then they did start selling it to the consumer and not as an, as an, exclusive isn't that unusual for a like a manufacturer well schumacher sells fabric and wallpaper but to have their own magazine well, well their it's like reading book was already it's, it's like reading the tea leaves i think when i see a schumacher put out something like that it means that there's something very valuable in the communication side of things that reach and they don't just write about schumacher in their magazine it mm -hmm. all the yeah. the house tours we've helped um um a designer get a house tour and that was tremendous they put a tremendous amount of time and energy into an online house tour um for for frederick and so that to that designer meant it was as if they had been um that meant a lot to, to the designer because of how elevated that is. And that's where, again, never dismiss the power of those online publications or the online version of very strong publications. They all have house tours now and there are more, there are more of those available. There's only so many for print. And what I see in the print is that the print has become like this crown jewel. You know, they're gonna run um, the, mo the most. It's, it's just got a lot going on in the story, in, in the project. Um, the layers the it's and and that's because they need to do something so special for the for the print and establish a voice but it's in the online where the, you have um, a lot more of the kind of projects that you maybe used to see in print and they're well, like you really said it lives so much longer online yeah I mean it does y you know your print magazines I mean I save them for a while and then then they do get tossed. So. But there's, you know, there's yeah. those of us that still like to touch paper and oh, we all stack do. the magazines we, we love and it. stack mm -hmm. the books and mm -hmm. there's all that. But then, you know, there's people like my husband who live on his enormous iPad and his little iPad, he's got like three and, you know, and that's how he reads. So, <laughs> that's right. you know, everybody's different. So yeah, that online presence is absolutely, yeah. absolutely huge. And right, we, so for, we, we forget we forget just about also those other areas like alumni magazines. Um, yep. Everybody's got publications. If you really if you really think about who you are and all the groups you might be associated with, just don't forget those also because some of those might be extremely meaningful and actually closer to the client you're looking for than getting published mm -hmm. in a national publication. 
Yeah, I agree. I remember that's right. how I found my sorority sister, Kelly Corrigan, who's a New York Times bestselling author time and time and time again. But I, I, it was my Theta magazine that I had opened up and there was a whole feature of her and how she survived breast cancer and all the writing she's that's doing right. now. And, and I became mm -hmm. so connected to her. Yeah. And then I, I mean, now all my friends have all of her books because she's so amazing. Totally. And it was from that Theta magazine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so can we switch gears for a second? Because sure. you're so great at this, but then you've started a loca home, which I know is very near and dear to your heart. And so tell our audience yeah. all about it, because I think it's so amazing. We're all about switching well, gears. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm good with that. That's <laughs> life, isn't it? And well, somehow right. it all yeah, and you know, especially for us together. Mm -hmm. it, it really does, and and somehow it does come together and of course we're dynamic women why would we do this continue to do the same thing it would evolve if you're good at something opportunities come your way if you're got your eyes open and you care about certain things and i i really have always loved making things probably why i started out telling the story of people who made things um and it did not dawn on me for gosh 25 years that I would enjoy um, actually having my own product and learning the entire business of owning and selling a product. I was, I was um, very expanded in my communications lane. So this Al Aloka, uh, having advised manufacturers with beautiful things, large and small, um, usually the people who would find me actually cared about the evidence of hand in their in their work. And as you ladies know, I don't think um, a lot of people know this, but I also have an art project and we make paper wigs for fashion houses. And it's a very small project. We might do two commissions a year, but these pictures that you're seeing are our wigs, um, me and a partner. We started this 10 years ago. At the same time, I wrote my first book. Really and amazing. It was just a product of imagination, but it really is so satisfying doing this by hand, one piece at a time. And you can see these wigs where like, I'm coming from the world of magazines where we just exaggerate everything. So a picture, you're always looking to add something to yeah. make that picture unique. And that's, I, that's probably where I connect with interior design as well. Mm -hmm. um, in those compositions of a room, of a home, you all do that so well. So um, I, I had worked with, um, I'd, I had a partner and had done many, uh, worked on min, many businesses with this one partner, st again, in communications. He was in India visiting his mom with his son. They found these quilts, these Kanta quilts, and shared it with me and said, um, I've, this is someone who's been in the textiles and in um, trade, uh, had owned trade showrooms for, for quite a while and knew what he was looking at. And he said, what do you think of this? And I said, this is the most beautiful thing I've seen. Now, that was it. That was it. it, it that's how it started. Um, mm -hmm. They were looking for something to stay connected to where grandmother and mother were in India. Um, and I think deep down, I, I must have been looking for another project. So we we the, the we started this together and started um, setting up the situation, making the relationships, and really buying the best of these that we could find. Because as you all know, because you've bought so many before, you bought Aloka. There, there. This is a ubiquitous across India when women retire their saris. Um, for centuries, they would then layer them and hand stitch them. But the ones that we are getting are 60 to 80 years old. And when you look at the stitching and how closely they are stitched, you see that that's given them strength um, to stay in such good condition over time. And that wear and that patina that you get from the pieces that we're choosing. So again, that editor's eye, there is something of value in the selection and in the time we put into it and in the direction because we will see thousands of these and pick hun a hundred. Um, and uh, that's kind of how it started. Uh, of course, we started bringing them here. You have to set up the business. We started um, in 2020 and then uh, like we all know, COVID happened. So we really had to rethink how we would bring these to market because we were familiar with High Point. We show in Cisco Home and in Red Egg. 
but High Point wasn't happening. So then we when really, I sit here and think about communications. <laughs> when I think about people that started businesses in 2020, yeah, right, and that, that are still surviving, that that's pretty incredible. Yeah. It really is. We spent and a I, lot I of just... time improving the product. That's what we did, yeah. and really trying to reach out one at a time to designers who we thought would be our our a, a large. Um, segment of our of our clients and letting them know what we were doing and sharing them and it was yeah it's slow growth but i want it to be sustainable so i'm good with that i love the hashtag salvaged beauty yeah we we the colors the co i know it's the amazing colors. i made my bed this morning and i have one of yours laid over top of my bed because my bed is all white and then i've got two dogs and mm -hmm. two cats and mm -hmm. and i put my dark green uh can't the quilt over my bed and but i love that i have I think, a piece yeah. of history of a woman's family of a woman's touch of in my own home on my bed mm -hmm. you know it's just it's very meaningful it, it gives me chills and i tell you that is how people people react with an emotional response to these things i i and they they say they look at these because they can you can see over time some have been patched where there was wear or whatever they extended the life with a very sweet patch and people look at these and say this is like looking at the story of my own life where i'm, I'm patchwork i'm strong um, and that's how they connect with it. And they also connect with the beauty and that these are one of a kind. I still get a lot. I'm trying. So I'm going to try here to communicate that these are unique, one of a kind. You will not find another like the one you choose. Um, but I do still get a lot of people say, when you're having those ladies make these for you and <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, I know. can't go back in time. These are very old, right? These are these, and, and can we wash them? Well, they are 80 years old, they've been washed a time or two. Um, yeah, so but they're that strong, but they they do feel precious, that's why people are asking. But when you really start to think about how these were made, usually by women and by extended family, that it might take six months to make one of these things. And mm -hmm. then that it's lasted that long. And then what happens is so who we purchase from, he goes to villages and just says, I, I would like to buy quilts. And so he is a collector of textiles. Then we go with him and go through and look at so many to start put together like I said in magazines, and that's where I apply that editorial point of view, because we could just buy all we want, but it wouldn't be cohesive. It wouldn't be our Aloka. It would be, right. we're on Etsy selling a bunch of blankets. What I love about it, and we talked about this a lot after our Morocco trip mm -hmm. is, and we always want to encourage this on our show, is really... A, the importance of women pivoting careers and following their passions and being very successful at it like you have. Um, but two, always looking for the art and the beauty in made goods and finding those those artisan qualities and and those those this, pieces that are special. You know, they're not yeah. disposable, you know pieces yeah. that are made in the thousands right. and, and it's really important to us as designers to, think. yes right to be it's able to offer that to clients that it's something that's unique and different but i, I want to ask you where, where's, where does the name aloka come from yeah um it it is a word that means um it means um in hindi point of view or vision like that you can see mm. through the light kind of so that didn't come from me. Love Obviously, that. that came from my partners who understand Love that. Um, the language. But that that is uh, that is a loca, and I like the way That's it amazing. flows. Um, I yeah. do. I will say that in continuing to, um, I have pivoted, but I am learning now what it feels like to be a complete business person. I mean, I've had my mm -hmm. communications, the boutique agency. We continue to advise. Um, a handful of designers because that what that does is it keeps us understanding the business of design. We are selling to designers. Um, it also helps us to keep that media list um, uh, updated because that is a right. 12 year old pro um, product. Yeah. So the media list, we didn't really thing. talk. Yeah. 
We didn't really talk about yeah. that, Amy. So you have a media yeah. list that gives the names and emails of editors. Yeah. And yeah. their I mean, that's social gold. media contacts. It's gold. I tell you, Gotta I don't get know it. people really understand this, but <laughs> it, even if you weren't pitching and you wanted to understand the editorial field in home design, um, the, for the length of time that we have been putting this together for entrepreneurs and for interior designers uh, specifically, um, like you, there's so much movement in the editorial field and you can't find these a smaller curated list that is up to date. So what, because we have been doing this for so long and because even the publicists value this so much, they help us. They come to us and say, oh, so-and-so just left or so-and-so is here. And we can update nice. that in real time. We moved it to a subscription base so that we could update it in real time. And that also we could um, honor the the editors who want to be on that but who don't want to be spammed. So it does yeah. really, the way it works is... Um, it is still a, you would have to pitch one at a time. You just can't take a, a an yeah. Excel spreadsheet and, and use it. And, oh, please and don't I think do that. They, yeah. <laughs> they want to be found. We have freelancers now coming and asking to be on the list. So we really work at it. I have one person completely dedicated to it and a team and the rest of my team is part of the weekly updating that list. And it just takes that, but um, it, we use it too. So that's how I now use my own products for my own company but it's, it's kind of fluid in how I work with interior designers or how I continue to talk about this DIY PR because I, I get it. I, I now get a, a really good taste of what I'm preaching, which is yeah. Yeah. humbling. Humbling. <laughs> you, have, you have a lot She's of- going back to her own book. What did I, I say? I got to pitch these quotes. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, what? Yeah. yeah. You got a lot, of great, a lot of great stuff going on, but I think yeah. we're out of time, yeah. are we? I know, I know. That it goes I've so got fast. a great so team. Stay with us. So I do we'll want do to say yes. a great team. Yeah. That always helps, right? So um, help. stay with us while we do our funny and serious quotes. Um, this funny quote, you know, so many people can relate to this. So if you're over 35, hire movers. Your friends are too old. Nobody wants to slip a disc for pizza and two beers. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> that's Stash, Stash Birmingham again. Oh, that's, that's so, so good. good. Okay. Here is our serious quote, which applies very much to our conversation today from Maya Angelou, of course. The question is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with passion, compassion, humor, and style. Amen. Amen. I love that. It's so That's good. I love that. Let's, let's, let's yes, live yes. it. Let's live it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Reminders. So Keep thank you it. again, Amy. Uh, if you're a designer, we highly recommend you check out her book, Recipe for Press, and the Recipe for Press media list. And thank you, Outrageous Interiors, for sponsoring this episode and being a great resource for interior designers and homeowners alike. Yes. Thanks for listening, it's been everybody. A treat. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Amy. Bye. Bye. Join Joanne and Kelly for a new episode every other Friday as they continue to explore the nuances of the interior design business with the goal of informing, inspiring, and entertaining their listeners. See their work at kendrak-cole.com and engage with them on Facebook and Instagram at kendrakcole.